And we're back. Welcome back to O'Neill Family Farms. I am your host, Rob O'Neill. We are in harvest 2022 mode. We have switched back over to corn in case you didn't notice that little transition there. I'm I'm sneaky like that. Nailed it. Oh almost a little bit of side shift there. some hailed corn. This corn got hailed, I think. My brother said roughly four times this year. It had a lot of issues this year. It's just me and my machine up here. This is kind of our far north fields. It's it's close to the town of Mason City, Nebraska, not Iowa. I mean, it's probably got a population of at least a hundred of something. My brother's still down south. He's got, he's going to bags. The reason why we're doing this is we didn't have enough trucks to have both machines up here. So he's going to the bag. He's filling up bags right now. Later he'll send a truck maybe to the bin. He's gonna see how that goes. But that's what we're doing right now. So far though, we've, we've picked a few fields of corn. Uh, they've been doing better than we thought probably. I mean, not last year good but one of them you know was really well and, and the other one you know kind of impressive the hard thing for these fields to do anything that the pivot water didn't touch it's there's not much there but whatever the water did touch it it helped tremendously so that's kind of the biggest limiting factor is is we're in a drought right now and water was a huge limiting factor for us this year reason why we're up here too is just to get it in case if we ever get a big wind we don't want to have to pick it up all off the ground but actually the stock quality looks okay for now I don't know how well it would stand in a storm but I guess that's why we're up here is to get it before it falls over I don't know we got other fields up here too the question is will we stay up here and is it dry enough to actually stay up here and finish the rest or will we have to go back down south so those are all questions we have but today would be a good day to kind of go over the basics of just a combine I've done this before you know, years past, but just for those of you new to the channel, uh, welcome, by the way. And also, just to kind of catch everybody, get everybody on the same page, and maybe I missed stuff on the last one. I'll kind of try to do most of the stuff, obviously, from in the cab first, because that's where I am, and that's where I hope to stay the rest of the day. Like I always say, I would rather be bored, because that means you're actually getting stuff done, instead of out working on a bunch of different stuff. So I'll flip it over to wide view here. So what we're running is a John Deere S770 Combine. It's a 2021 model. Yeah, I'll get this out of the way. It's a year old. We got it. This is our first year with it. Um, but this is the basic layout. You got your, your joystick over here that has a lot of functions on it over here. Um, they try to make... John Deere does a great job of kind of ergonomics and kind of having everything us farmers have it pretty cushion here. But this does a lot of your main functions, a lot of your frequent functions. Like you got your auger, you kick your auger, unload auger out and in. So when you want to unload it to go, it kicks it out over there. This is uh, your head. Oh, see, like, got a pivot track there. I think you're going to move on top of this hill to load. So what I just did there is I reactivated my three. These are your head preset functions. You actually control how you want these done. Um, one is usually your up. So when you get to the end and want to pick up your header, it's your preset up position and how you can set that position is over here with this knob it'll actually uh, increase it or decrease it Back. if you see this green icon will move up and down as i increase or decrease that's basically adjusting my height and also you've seen that number three i'm in the three function that's the one i use for my normal mode and then two is kind of my low i'm backwards some people might do it differently, but that's the beauty of it. You can do it any way you want to do it. So when I hit three, it's kind of my standard mode. It goes down and it'll even control it. These are controlled by three head sensors on the end of the, the snout. There's one on the end, center, and the other end. So when I pick it up to the end, it's going to come up to my preset height. 
when I turn the wheel, it deactivates my auto track. This is another time. I got speed functions. This is kind of my field speed I have set at. If I want to kick it up a little bit, I can come up here and I have it preset to eight mile an hour so I can kind of boogie over to the next uh, part of the land. So I want to get ready, I can kick it back down. And then this is my auto function. This will kick my auto track in. And then I can hit my three function, lowers my head. And then we're off to the field. Or off to the field. And this E function is kind of nice. These are programmable buttons. So when I engage that, I have it set to engage my harvest track, if you've seen that. But anyway, I can come in here to my advisor and I can preset my speed. And it's basically set to how my combine is doing. I have all these turned on. I have my auto maintain, I have my active terrain management. We'll, we'll come back to that. But anyway, it's, it's a preset speed either to the combine performance or your max speed that you set for it. And right now I have it set at 3.7 or 3.6. Um, we're not in very great corn right now. This has been hailed, like I said before. Not too up through here. But anyway, that's kind of what that function button does. Over here, we also got more multi-unit functions. This one will actually tilt the head back and forth. It's got four and a half tilt, so this head can actually go back and forth. It'll show up on my screen. I'm tilting it back and forth. And so you can kind of preset it which way. That's kind of a nice feature. Um, these, you can program them to do other things, but I don't have them set to do anything else. Say if you had maybe machine sync, which controls the auger wagon, you can set them for that. I don't know exactly. You also have more over here programmable things. In order to do that, you come down here to this button here, and this will come through, and that'll actually program. You can set different programs. So if you see back here, I have this roller knob. I don't know if you can see it. There's a roller knob right there. The row sense, I got fingers on this head. Row sense is an auto track system that has fingers that come through. It's actually in one of those, between those snouts up there. I don't like using that. It's always shifting wrong and I don't like it. So I use our field headings from the planner and I program them in here and see if it's just not quite right. I use that roller to kind of reline that back up. So I'm gonna like toggle it back and forth and kind of say I want to get back on. In the hills, it just seems like it works better. That row sense thing will kind of dog track and then you're always leaning your corn over. That's my experience. So this is a quick way to go back and forth. I'll just roll it. Say I want to bump to the left. I kind of go like that, right? That's all kind of off a of feel. It's really slick to do. If I click it, it'll actually center it. Say if I'm way off, I'll drive it over click it, it's actually got a button in that roller, and I'll click it and it'll kind of line it back up quicker. So there's all kinds of things to do with that. Like I said, this is my head up and down, side to side, it'll tilt it manually. This will do my deck plates. So this head is equipped with hydraulic deck plates. And what that is, is it's kind of the fork that brings in that head. So say that row there, the deck plates kind of looks like my fingers. I can control those to be wider or narrow depending on the residue and ear size coming in. So say if I want that narrower, I can push it in. It makes it smaller. If I want it to go wider, push it back out. We'll go to number five. That's kind of where I've been running it for these conditions. Up and down is my head speed. This is equipped with a five speed feeder house. That's a transmission that can speed up or slow down my head. So right now I'm, I'm, I've actually been running it on two. So I just click it, speed it up, speed it down, depending on, like I said, speed, combine speed, and uh, residue conditions and so forth. Time for the union mandated break. So while I got some time and the grain cart's dumping, 
A lot of these newer S-Series combines are equipped with a camera system on the side. I'll show you when we get back to combine side here, but... taking a picture all the time and it shows you how good or cracked or clean your sample is up in there. This is also a moisture tester. It goes up in there and it kind of comes around and it tells you the moisture of your grain. This is your tailings return. There's another camera down in here. This is kind of the dirty crap that goes back that maybe didn't get thrashed right or something. Matt's always taking a picture of those. So you got two layers, you got your top chopper and your bottom sieve, but it doesn't make it through. There's another uh, row in there, and that kind of gleans it a little bit more, and what doesn't makes it through there comes back up. This guy starts all over again. That's a little bit different on the bigger combines. It actually has a re-thresher system. It goes back up, but that's kind of advanced level stuff, but it's a slightly different deal. It helps. That's basically how they get their more cleaning areas, that re-thresher system. One of the bigger differences too between this and a 780 or 790, the 760s and 770s are equipped with a nine liter engine. I believe the 780s have a 13.5 maybe in the 790s. So every size you got a bigger jump too with horsepower. That's kind of one of the different cards coming. Can't let them know I'm vlogging. <sighs> so on these smaller frame comp, well, it's smaller now compared to the X9s. For those of you who follow John Deere combines, those are the big new dogs. When I went outside, you get these climate control cabs and kind of just keep setting it where you want it to be and get outside and you're like oh it's warmer than I thought so but no that camera is kind of dirty now but oh that's because I opened so that's that camera system on the side this is what it's doing this is the grain the clean grain elevator the first camera we looked at that's what it's taking a picture of as you can see the sample's got some some sticks and stuff in it it'll, it'll clean itself out here after a bit because i messed with it but then we got the secondary camera that's kind of what the tailings camera is see it's kind of the junk that it's kind of set to go through the system again that's what it's taken back up into that tailings return or auger sorry i had the music on so what this also camera system allows this uh, machine to do is you're able to kind of set it to where you want it and then it automatically adjusts. So we got the auto maintain feature, which this is kind of how it's gonna to respond to uh, grain loss, broken grain form material. It's gonna be all continually monitoring that stuff. You'll see here, it'll highlight these grains in different colors. It'll tell if it's broken, form material, light or heavy. That's kind of what it's doing. Here's a bigger view of what the tailings augers look like. It's a lot of just, residue basically to go back and kind of see the different adjustments you made just to see what's worked what hasn't worked this is how you optimize your performance it's kind of a, a cheat sheet so if you're getting too much separator loss you can tell it moderate and then it'll re recommend it and then if you apply it it'll actually automatically do it to your machine then you can kind of see from there <laughs> we come over here I'll just kind of quickly describe some of these switches over here these are the main ones to turn on your separator your combine pusher and this one's your head this one kicks on your head you just kind of push down and go forward that's that these are your rpm gauges instead of like a, a 
infinite throttle, you've got three stages, which basically you're either usually on all the time. That's kind of why they just have three modes on these gears. They've always kind of done it. I even remember the 9500 I ran when I first started. It only had two speeds. You had low and then you had high. So it's always kind of been a John Deere thing to do it like that. This is your road mode, so when you take your head off, it kind of locks everything in, like your auger, your, your feeder house, which is that guy right there that your head hooks up to. You just click on that guy, and he takes you into road mode. You forgot to shut it tight. Stuff growing. Penny crest. And no, that's not a cover crop. like my ride showed up. I let the car driver take my pickup home and my wife's in the truck so we will see you on the next one. Oh you have a lot of cord in there. <laughs> How much? You say goodnight.